Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Mandy Michael. Thank you so much for joining us, Mandy. Thanks for having me uh, so I, early in my morning. I know. I appreciate you waking up. Um, <laughs> it, the, this was an, an interesting one because the time zones are so different that it is. Um, so it's 430 in Portland right now, and it is 830 in the morning for you. Yeah, 8.30 in the morning, on a Saturday, I should add. Oh, oh now we got you in on your <laughs> weekend. Jeez, okay. So, um, well, we really, really, really appreciate you coming in. Uh, and, and this is going to be super fun, I think. Um, so for those of us who aren't familiar with your work, do you mind giving us a little bit of a, a background? Sure, sure. So uh, I'm a front end developer mostly. Um, I, I manage a dev team as well here in, in Perth, but uh, most of the stuff that people probably know me for is I make a bunch of text effects with CSS. Um, I used to just do it with CSS and HTML, but I have ventured more into adding JavaScript in now because I kind of uh, beat the, I kind of hit my limit on making it with CSS alone and, and moved into adding JavaScript. So, um, and then I obviously do a lot with variable fonts. Oh yeah, the folded one is my most popular. Um, this one is very even, cool. I don't even I remember making it now. <laughs> I remember doing it, but if you were to ask me how the whole thing came about, I'd be like, I don't know. I was having a cup of tea on the couch and then it just came together. <laughs> um, that's how most of my text effects come about. I sit on the couch and make, make cups of tea and then, um, and then, you know, uh, make something. Um, the variable fonts I'm pretty into at the moment because I think they're really awesome. Um, but yeah, mostly I just make stuff on CodePen, tinker around, put it out there. It's mm. pretty fun. I enjoy it. Um, not, nothing too serious. I don't think experiments should always be serious and practical. I like them to be a bit, bit experimental and fun. Yeah. I mean, and I, like, I love the, the funness of these, like these are, they're so cool and it's it's always very clever um and these are like the fact that they're editable too always just really makes me smile because yeah. you yeah. know it it makes it so clear that that this actually is just like this is text it's not there's no magic there's no images there's not like you know a really really difficult coding stuff going on that's like makes this impossible to edit it's like no this is just text yeah. you can do whatever with it yeah, so it's funny. Um, the reason I started making these is a few years ago, I got a bit burnt out and I hated web development. <laughs> and uh, I was going to quit. I was like, no, nah, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to go back to selling shoes in the shoes sh shop, which which I actually quite enjoy doing. Um, but my, my partner was like, well, I mean, maybe you should just find what you like about web development again. So um, what I started doing was Googling Photoshop text effects and then I would remake them in CSS. So some of those early ones, if you were to Google image search, you would find the folded one. It's actually a, a tutorial, which I think I have in the, the link in the details. And the same with the piece of cake one. They're, they're Photoshop text effects. Um, yeah, if you go to details, it's in there. Oh, that's um, the wrong button. <laughs> um yeah, it, they, they're actual, like, I just went, oh, okay, I'll try and build that with, with CSS. Um, and then my rules were that it had to be CSS and HTML, that it had to be editable, um, and, like, I, I couldn't have, like... <laughs> Amazing. Welcome to the stream. Uh, the chat is here. <laughs> Spectacular. I've got a party corgi on my my other laptop. I yes, it's not this one. It's really good. It's my favorite um, emoji in Slack. But yeah. Yes, it anyway. is <laughs> definitely one that we get a lot of mileage out of. Um, uh, the the party corgi Discord is um, is like where a lot of a lot of folks hang out who do like content creation and stuff, and uh, occasionally they talk me into playing Fortnite. It's it's pretty fun, but um, <laughs> they, that emote gets so much use it like it's it's kind of like the general you know you can use it to mean anything <laughs> yeah totally i mean it works for pretty much everything and corgis are very relatable i think as a as a dog indeed um i forgot what we were talking about 
We were talking about uh, how you got into this, which was by oh. uh, doing Photoshop text effects as CSS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the rules were that it had to be editable and uh, it couldn't have like lots and lots of um, markup at the time. So like I didn't want to have five H1s in the page. Mm -hmm. um, when I first did it, the pseudo elements, um, which we'll probably use today, um, were better for accessibility than they are now. But um, yeah, the, I didn't want to have like lots of markup. I wanted it to be editable, that kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, fun. It's super fun. Um, and so that's what we are going to attempt to do today. Um, and so what we're doing right now is a, a like a collaborative um, code pen, which yes. I'm going to, I should log in. Let's see. How do I do this? I'm going to log in over here so I don't break things. I think this <laughs> one will work. Yes. Uh, cool. I think I can just refresh and I'm in. Okay. So now awesome. um, we are, we're both in here. And, cool. <laughs> uh, and nice. thank you very much for the raid, by the way, Chris. Hello. Uh, it's good to see everybody here. We've got Tony here, Lily, Robert. Good to see y'all. Um, thank you for stopping by. And let's, let's dive right in. So what did you have in mind today? Okay. So uh, I thought about making something serious, but the pressure of making it look good was like, no, nah, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so I thought we would just make something a bit silly and fun and we can, you know, use some gradients and um, make something a bit bit crazy. Maybe we'll we'll get a corgi in there or something. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, maybe we'll make it a bit of a surprise as we go. You can like can contribute um, with colors and whatnot. Actually, I quite liked the pink in your logo. So maybe we'll make it like pink and purple because then it yeah. kind of like goes with your logo. Okay, cool. Um, what I'll do is just explain the setup. This is actually a template pen that I have on CodePen. So uh, because I make so many, uh, I'm lazy and I don't want to set stuff up all the time. So I have a template and then I just create a new pen from the template and it just has a bunch of stuff in it already. So I, I don't have to copy and paste between CodePens. So the main bit is the H1, which obviously has my dog's name in it, um, like most of my demos do these days. <laughs> the, the rest of this stuff is not super important for the actual text effect. Um, I have this div around everything. Uh, all it does is if there's an animation in there, it'll start and stop the animation with the button down the bottom. Got it. Um, I do this for two reasons. One, so that people don't have to watch the animation if they don't want to. But also when I'm working on the demos, uh, sometimes the animation is a pain. Uh, so I turn it off so that mm. I can like debug things. Um, so it kind of serves a purpose for me and, and also for anyone that wants to look at stuff. Yeah. So that's what the, the button and the controls are. And there's like um, in the JavaScript panel, there's a bunch of JavaScript at the bottom there um, that just works on mobile and adds and removes a class from the page. Like it's not, not really anything special. Um, and then uh, in the CSS, I've set up a couple of base things. And I do this every time because I al almost always want my text to be centered in the page. And I almost always want a body of a hundred viewport height. So I add the height because I always put like an image or a gradient in the background and it just makes it all work nicely. Right. Um, and then uh, the Flexbox stuff is literally just vertically and horizontally aligning. So we justify um, for horizontal and align for uh, vertical. And that puts my text in the middle. Um, I have overflow hidden because often I'll put like, massive divs in the background that I've sure. scaled twice the size of the viewport and I don't, I horizontal scroll bars make me really unhappy. So <laughs> I just put that in there um, and then it's not a problem. It's like it was never, never existed. Got it. Um, and then the font size, I just is 33 because it almost fits at a nice size. Um, I use viewport width units because when you scale, it'll just work and I don't have to worry about it not looking weird, uh, like looking weird on a mobile. Um, mm -hmm. 
I probably, well, I wouldn't do this on a production site. I'd use like a calc function and calculate the pixels and stuff based off the viewport. But uh, for my demos, I just keep it simple. Totally. So what I normally do at this point is pick a font. And normally I'll go to something like v-fonts.com, um, which is a, lately, because I'm using a lot of variable fonts, v-fonts.com is a variable fonts resource for um, variable fonts, basically. And it lists most of the ones that you'll be able to access and it tells you whether they're paid or free. Um, and I just spend a bit of time like tinkering with the little sliders to, to see what they do and if there's anything that I can do with the font. Um, there's a bunch of new ones I actually haven't seen um, that have been added recently, which is cool. There's one like a bit further down. I don't know if it'll come up. That's like shardy. Uh, where is it? I don't know how far down it is. Maybe it's not on that page. There's also this weird liney one, which I think is really cool. I What's it called? You... Uh, it's called, so there's one called Home Computer, which is really cool. Oh, that one. Play with that one. That's really awesome. Ooh. Make the, yeah, it's cool, huh? And then if you change the width now, it's like super Oh, lining. that's wild. Yeah, it's cool. I really like that one. Um, and then a little bit further down, there's one called Format Shards, which is like, yeah, that one, that one just below. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the- Variable fonts are awesome. I know, they're so cool. Um, I, I'm making it, one with this at the moment. And for, which for anybody who is interested um, in like more of an intro to variable fonts, um, I had Jason Pam, uh, oh no, he corrected me on the pronunciation and now I'm second guessing. <laughs> Pam and Pamentel? I don't I'm know. I'm not sure. Damn it. I uh, just call him Jason. I know. That's usually what I call him too, but uh, now I don't remember. He Because I've always said his name wrong and then uh. he corrected me and now in my brain, I can't remember which was which. So I apologize for uh, not remembering how to pronounce your name, Jason. That uh, That's rude. Anyways, go watch that if you want to learn how variable fonts work. Um, yes, Jason is awesome. That's not really what we're going to cover today. We're just going to play with it. No. Yeah, we're just going to play with them. I won't, I won't, I'll probably explain some things as we go because otherwise it won't make sense. But um, for the most part, uh, we'll just assume a base level knowledge. We're not going to use any of V dash fonts though. We're going to use one called, if you go to recursive.design. Oh, recursive.design. Dot dot design. Yeah. I, I really want to use this font because I haven't made anything with it yet. And I think it's really, really cool. Um, so this one is, is open source, I believe. You can download the beta off GitHub. Okay. And um, I, if you scroll down a little bit, I've got a, um, what I like about this one, I always change the text to Jello because it's more fun for me. But um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I like, I like doing that. Um, what I like about this one in particular is that you can switch it between monospaced and like oh, natural width. Awesome. And I think that's really, really cool because when you make text effects, sometimes depending on what you want to do, having it monospaced is way easier to work with. Because you know how uh, with different characters, they're sometimes um, smaller in width than others. Mm -hmm. And if you want to space something out, it's not always easy to do because, you know, there's it's a natural width instead of a fixed width. So I like yeah. this one for that reason. I also like that it goes between this like blocky font with the casual um, one, the, the second slider down to this sort of weird um, soft edges. I think that's really neat. Yeah. And it's got a weight axis, which is always fun to play with. And it has a slant axis as well, which I also think is cool. So it gives us some options to play with. It's, it's you know, free to use. You don't have to pay for it. Um, and it's really nicely made. Yeah, it's uh, really nice. Yeah, it's super cool. So this is the one that I think we'll use, which I have already uploaded um, into my code pen. If you scroll down to below the control CSS, yeah, keep going. 
Below the controls. Down, down it. I don't know, up, yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Ah, got it. So I already put the font face in. Um, basically, uh, I just gave it a name for the version number that it is. So later I know what version I use because when they're in beta, they change a lot. Um, and if there's something not working right in the one that I've got versus the one on the web, I know which version I have. Got it. Um, basically, you use it the same way you you normally would. The only major difference is that uh, if you look at the font weight, um, normally you'd only have one value in there and then you do another font face block. But with a variable font, you can define the full range. So in Recursive's case, the font weight range is 300 to 1,000. So you can put that in. And then when you go back up to the H1 in the CSS, you can just say um, whatever number, what font weight you want between like 300 and 1,000. So like 567 or whatever. Um, and then it will, whoop, back can I update? Oh, uh, you know what I have to do? I actually have to put the font family on the H1 first. That would be helpful. Um, is it work? Oh, there it is. wrong. No, Wait. no, no, that's wrong. Is that's it? the wrong name. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it. So then, like, if I wanted to, I could change it to a thousand, and it would just be beautiful. Um, but I think I'll probably put it at five hundred. Actually, let's not use that. What we'll do is use the font variation settings. So the way that you access the different um, axes with a variable font is with um, either things like font weight, font stretch, or font style for things like italic, um, uh, width, or um, weight or for custom axes like recursive has like casual um and mono uh oh, is mono width i'm not sure um no i think it's i think a it's custom, like a character spacing not necessarily a width yeah i think it's it's a custom one in in this font um yeah so font variation settings is how you access the custom uh axes so if i was to add mono in um for custom axes, you put them in uppercase and for um, spec ones like weight and width, they're, they're lowercase. So if you notice that, you'll that's what I'm doing. Um, so I want to use it mono. Oh. Um, and then you go like, uh, what was the other one? That one. And yep. then we'll make we'll make that one. And then uh, what else did we have? <laughs> weight. And we'll go 500. And then we'll go, uh, we'll do slant. Is it minus seven? Is it negative numbers? Yeah, it was negative numbers. Actually, I'll leave that as zero. Um, so that gives us the base. Um, oh, it's 500. Yeah. yeah, let's make it chunky for now. Um, so once I've got the font in, then I basically start figuring out how I want the rest of it to look. Um, and normally I like to use um, gradients or an image or something just because yeah. it's fun and you don't normally have that in text. Uh, so there's a couple of websites that I like. The one I think we'll use today is UI Gradients. Do you know that site? UIGradients.com? I don't, but I'm about to. UIGradients.com. Yeah, I like this one because um, if you click on Show oh. All Gradients... It has like a color range. It's on the left, yeah. And then pink. We'll go pink, like I said, because okay. um, it matches your logo. Uh, and then I like pick one. I like argon. That one. I, yep. Yeah. This is great. Uh, yeah. So what I like about this is that you can just like copy the CSS. Up. There's like a little code angle brackets, and it gives you the CSS. I never take the first two lines. I only take the last one because just the last. I don't. Yeah, yeah, I don't Got need it. the fallbacks. We don't, we don't need to do that. And then I paste that and get rid of the comments um, into my H1. Got it. Um, and that adds it in the background. Uh, and then um, what I do now is we use a property called background clip and we say text. And that gets rid of it. Um, and then we can use another property called WebKit um, text fill color transparent, which what, this actually works in all browsers. <laughs> and then we get like a really cool um, gradient background. 
The reason that you have to get rid of the text fill color is because the background is behind the fill of the text. So you don't see it if you don't get rid of it. Um, you can also do color transparent as well, but um, I usually okay. use. I'm, this I'm just going to, I'm just going to pause you for a second because like a lot of times people will, will comment on like, cause you know, I do the show and I do a lot of live coding and people will comment yeah. and say like, oh, I just, I can't believe you can do all this stuff. And you just, you know, you just like, you can type so fast. And, and I'm getting like the opposite side of this. I'm watching you do this and I'm just like, holy crap, look at you go. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's a, it's amazing. Like this is super cool to see. Um, I've made so many of them now. It just becomes natural. This, this actually works. Um, so this will work on uh, Safari, um, Firefox, Chrome, okay. iOS. Um, it'll, it'll all work. It'll be good. Um, Otherwise you can do this, but I don't like doing that because um, with WebKit text fill color, if it's not supported, it will um, just be black. Uh, whereas if you do this and that's not supported, then it won't be visible at all, which Got it. makes me scared because if someone's using like IE 10, um, they won't see any text, which Got would be it. sad for them. Um, so I use that instead, but yeah. So what I do now, because I don't like the white background is I usually take the gradient that I've already got and I whack it on the body, but then I'll like get rid of a couple of bits, like the last two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Cool. That looks okay. good. Uh, now I don't like the, I'm going to change that back to 500. I don't like it being so bold. Um, now at this point, uh, I'll normally add a text shadow. Um, so this is kind of when I start to cheat. Um, I normally go to one of my pre-existing code pens and copy a text shadow that I've already written. Okay. Um, so I can go to my dashboard and I go to like my public pens um, and then the, where, where are we at? Yeah, so cool. I'm going to your, I don't know, it got into yeah. a weird state. So if you okay. go, to, go to all pens. All pens. Um, and Whoa. there's one, the jello one down the bottom right. That's the one I'm going to steal from. Got it. Um, so you so would just come I, in here and get like this text shadow. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to copy that whole text shadow. Don't worry about the variables. We won't need those. Okay. Um, and, and then I like paste it into my code pen and I'm going to get rid of half of this, uh, cause we're not going to need that. Um, and then, uh, what colors do I want to use here? Maybe like a pink, like a magenta. Oh, do you know what we'll do? I have this tool on my computer called contrast. I don't know if you've heard of it before mm -hmm. it's like for testing um accessibility of colors is it a, um, like a chrome extension uh no it's a mac um mac app i guess is it that this one, one? yeah here? that one yeah 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 so i have that and nice. i use it to test accessibility but also to um color pick web uh, colors from literally anywhere on my computer and it's super duper um super duper useful because uh, I don't like having to remember hex codes. So I've just color picked a pink from the UI gradients page Okay. Um, for my tech shadow. I think I want to use a pink there. Um, uh, no, I don't know if I like that. Oh, maybe Is we'll it showing for you? One. I can't. Can you see that? Oh yeah, no. Okay, I'm gonna explain that in a minute. But first, I have to fix. Um, first, I have to fix all of my uh, variables, which are currently breaking. I'm gonna do this the really slow way. I'm sorry if this is painful <laughs> no but for everyone watching. Um, but every time I try and do the multi-select when other people are watching, it's a disaster. Um, oh, here we go. Gonna, okay. Yeah, yeah. Then we're going to go black and we'll go three and maybe we'll make it 40 because that'll be a nice red. Um, okay, if so I... a question here. 
Yeah. This just kind of overrode the the text color, like our gradient. Yes, I know. So this is a bit of a problem with background clip because okay. uh, background clip, uh, the background image is behind the text shadow because it's the background and the text shadow actually sits on top of whatever's in the background of the H1. And the way text shadows work is that they, um, they actually fill all the way behind the text, okay. which you normally don't see. So if I, if I comment this out and put the color back, Normally, the fill of the text covers the bit where the text shadow is, but when there's no text fill, you see the whole text shadow behind. Got it. Um, so uh, what we're going to have to do um, is use some pseudo elements. So I'll use a before. Um, I'll just whack that in there. So I'll use that. Um, and uh, I'm going to have to, on my H1, um, add, we'll use dot attributes uh, for today. Um, okay. And we'll pass the value of the data attribute into the content property of the pseudo element um, using the CSS attribute function. So we can go content, uh, what did I call it? It was data heading, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah cool. Um, and what that will do is now you can see there's two copies of the text. Right. Um, so we can go uh, position absolute. I'll just go like top left. Um, and then I'll need to add position relative onto my H1. There we go. So now I have two copies of the text that are sitting um, like in, in different uh, levels. But um, because of the way the background works, we have to move the background gradient off the H1. So we need to use uh, both before and after pseudo elements to do that. Actually, what I'll do here is go like, so I don't have to. Got it. Don't have to do that multiple times. So we've got our text shadow on our before. Um, it doesn't actually really matter um, which way you do it. Uh, because we'll use a um, we'll use a Z index. So yeah, cool. Oh, uh, actually, maybe we don't need to use the Z index. That'll work okay. Um, so now we have the text shadow, um, which gives the one pixel pink outline around the letters, and then it's got from uh, the one that says four uh, C F F D one. That's the teal. Um, we just keep adding that until it gives us a bit of a 3D look. And the way it works is you just, uh, whatever direction you want to go in, you just keep incrementing the numbers. So okay. I've got like one, zero, zero, one, two, one, one, two, three, two, two, three, four, three, three, four. And you just keep going until it's the desired distance that you want. And that just keeps adding extra offset background text shadow basically to the text got it and okay the I, last, under, I understand yeah. so so what that's doing and the the reason is that uh like if you have a regular shadow you have the, the two pieces and then as you offset it it like there's just the two copies so you'd have these kind of like ragged edges in between so what you're yeah, doing yeah. is you're making the shadows fill in that that edge yeah yeah basically. i understand i understand okay so you've got to you've got to stagger them and mm. fill in the awkward um, stepped bit that the, the shadows have. It's not got always it. perfect, and depending on the um, different kinds of fonts, you sometimes see like if you were to zoom in, you sometimes see like a little bit of a stepped edge. Sure. Um, which you can kind of get around if you like spread it a little bit, but um, I, I most of the time it works okay. It's actually pretty good on this one. Um, I also, I've removed this before so you can see, I've also added a, um, like, I'll oh, make it a little bit darker. I've also added a, like, uh, what's it called? Kind of like a big drop shadow. Um, the reason I do that is I feel it gives it a bit of depth, um, which I like, um, but we don't need it to be one because that's very, very dark. That is many. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll just have a subtle, a subtle one. Uh, okay. 
So what I want to do now, um, because this is boring, uh, is um, I like to use Clip Path a lot in my text effects. So the folded text that you show uses Clip Path. And that one that said piece of cake, that also sure. used Clip Path as well to, to slice colors. So I think um, on the after with the background gradient, we'll like slice a bit of that off because that'll be fun. Um, how does this work again? Polygon. Um, zero percent, fifty percent, I think, and then we'll go. So what I'm going to do is like slice the top, like top left of this text off. So we'll go. Um, what is it then? One hundred percent, one hundred percent, and then it'll be one hundred percent zero, and then it'll be zero one hundred percent. Ooh, right. okay. So, so uh -huh. let me reverse engineer that to make sure I understand what just happened. You created a polygon, and that polygon starts at zero percent of the x-axis or the the width, and fifty percent of the height. Yes. Then it goes to a hundred percent of the width and zero percent of the height. Yeah. Then it goes to a hundred percent of both, mm -hmm. and then it comes back to the bottom left corner. Yeah, so we, we basically just drew a, a triangle. Yeah, so if I get rid of or the- Not quite, two, but. Um, You'll be able to see it. Um, so basically I've done this. Got it. Um, so yeah, you're, you're totally right. Um, I pretty much just drawn a shape. Um, and, and, and now this, would this work with like any number of points? So like if I just come in and start playing with this to, to really yeah. make your life hard, sorry. Um, I <laughs> do this and then we'll do like a 45%. That'll just draw. Yeah. So I just yeah. added another yeah. point there. Yeah. So cool. you can create, you can create any kind of shape that you want. And there's a really cool, um, website called, I always have to Google it. Um, cause I never remember what the URL is. Um, it's, if you Google clippy clip path, this is how I find it. Clippy clip path. <laughs> Clippy McClip Park. The Bennett Feely um, one? Yeah, the Bennett Feely one. This tool's really cool because um, it's on the right, it's got like a whole bunch of pre made shapes um, that you can play with if you want to. Oh, or there's. Cool. Yeah, and it gives you the clip path at the bottom that you can just copy or, you know, open in CoPen, um, which is also delightful for me. Um, so I use this a lot, um, especially for like chevrons and stuff, because you can just copy it. You don't have to like hand code it. Um, mm -hmm. And I also use the custom polygon one a lot, which just lets you draw whatever shapes that you want. Um, and I use this a lot when I'm making like things that I kind of want to look like it's, I don't know, when I'm doing arty things, one of my code pens, I cut around uh, an image of a dress so that I could make the text different depending on if it was over the image or not. Um, oh, and I found, nice. yeah, I thought that was really handy with clip path. Um, so I usually use this first and then I open it up in Firefox and use their built-in um, path editor to move the points around to match whatever it is that I specifically want to do. Yeah. So when, when it's not something simple like a, a, a simple four-point polygon like the one we did, then I'll, I'll use this instead because it's way easier. Um, yeah. It's a really cool tool. Uh, I like it a lot. Very cool. Okay. You, you, you can change the demo background if you're not into bridges. Um, not important. Like, uh, I hate bridges. <laughs> I'm going to look at this thing instead. Yeah, the sparkler. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe you're in the mood for a relaxing beach. Who knows? Um, maybe you've had a rough day and the sparkle is too much for you. Um, <laughs> I, I like options, so I appreciate it. Um, so, all right, uh, where are we? Oh, yeah, we are making the text effect. Okay, so this looks a bit not right. Um, what do I? I don't like the black. I feel like this should be maybe like a different color. Um, hmm. Maybe what I want to do. Oh, let's leave it for now. Oh, sorry. I just hit the microphone I have on my desk. Apologies, everyone. <laughs> um, 
don't know what I'm doing right now. Actually, what I think I might do is change this to a before and change this to an after. And, oh, no, do you know what I haven't done? That's why it's not working. I need to get rid of the H1's background colour. Yay, oh. that's what I want because the H1 still has a fill and we don't want that. We want um, we want the fill from the tech shadow, which is pink. Um, yeah, okay, Got cool. It. Okay. All right. So I don't want any normal fills on this because it gets in the way. All right, so uh, where what should we do now? Should we add like an animation? Yes, please. Okay. Um, oh, uh, hang on, wait. I'm just going to add it, make it all uppercase because that'll be better. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so this is, again, another thing that I usually cheat on. Um, because I have so many text effects, I um, once I've made something, I'll usually go back and copy and paste stuff and use it in a lot of my other um, demos okay. because I don't want to have to like remake the whole thing um, and it's more efficient that way and I like efficiency. <laughs> so I got a code pen called, um, it was actually a demo I made for Google Fonts. Um, if you go to the next page on this, if you scroll down and go next, I think it's on the next page. Yeah, yeah, that Fira code one. Um, I'm going to take the bounce from this and then we'll talk about the code once I put it in there, but it just saved me having to type it out. Um, this one um, was just using the Google Fonts API for variable fonts, but I added the bounce in because I thought it would be boring without something fun. <laughs> What's the point in making something without something fun? So I'm going to paste my bouncy bouncy thing in. Um, it currently uses um, splitting JS. Um, but uh, I won't use that just yet. Um, okay. I think we'll, we'll add splitting JS in, but okay. <laughs> so that's what my bounce looks like. Beautiful. Um, and what's cool terrible. is if I, so I hit stop. Yeah, it'll and stop. And it stops. Yeah. That's, re that's really nice. Yeah, yeah. Like when you're building stuff, sometimes the animation gets in the way of what you want to do a little bit. Um, and I don't, sometimes I do the animation first and then all of the, the colors and stuff, um, just depending on what, what I feel like doing. So it's, it's useful. Um, uh, so... Uh, the, the, I have, the reason I have this all split out is because I usually like play around with all of the settings. Um, so for this one, um, it only goes for like a couple of seconds. I Almost all of my animations run infinitely because it, it's a demo. Um, mm -hmm. And this timing function, I love so much. It's a bouncy one, which actually um, Leah Vero had it on. She has this, uh, what's it called? Um, the Cubic... Uh, Bezier uh, bounce thing. Uh, where is it? Leah. Is it this um, a better? Yeah, it's that one. I think the... it's that one. A better tool. Yeah, I think it's that one. Okay. No, it's not. Yeah, that one. A better tool. So if you scroll down on this page, she's got a link that said, here's a bouncing transition. Uh, scroll up, scroll up. Yeah, in the pink, here's a bouncing transition. Um, I found this years ago and it's still one of my favourite um, my favorite bouncy uh, timing functions. So I, I use it all the time. Oh, my but God. I really, yeah, this tool is so cool because you can play around with it to figure out how you want the bounce to work. Um, so I use this a lot. Um, I'm quite like... So I like to see things in order to, to know what they do. Um, so I really like tools like this um, because it, it helps me to visualize what I want something to look like. Uh, so, yeah, this is a, a super, super awesome tool that I highly recommend people use. Um, this is so cool. Right? Oh, I love it. It's really, really fun because um, you can just get the timing of how you want the bounce to work. It's perfect. Anyway, um, I'm using a, a bouncy thing that I made on, on that website. 
Because it's, it's uh, all awesome. right. I love it. Okay, this this yeah. this tool rules. Um, yeah, it's super super cool. Um, so I'm using that, and then uh, my animation delay will just comment out for now because that is the for splitting JS. Okay. Um, with the actual uh, keyframe, um, I'm not going to do that. I'll get rid of the font weights because we don't want those. I basically just got a whole bunch of transforms um, that, you know, uh, scale it and offset it up and down. Um, what I like about the scale is how you can scale it not proportionately, I guess. So you can sort of make it really squishy or uh, vertically or horizontally, depending on whether you specify like the X and Y scale. Mm -hmm. um, and I, not a lot of people do that. Um, but I find it really, really useful for text effects because like the folded one, I'm pretty sure I use it in that because you're trying to create a perspective right. and um, that, that's quite difficult to do sometimes, whereas scale allows you to like morph the thing into like a, a kind of different version of itself, I guess, and helps you to create a bit of um, perspective. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, I don't really like how that animation works, so maybe we will add splitting JS in. Um, all right, so splitting JS. I'm not sure if you're familiar with splitting JS as a library. I am not. It is a really cool um, little JavaScript library which basically splits up um, elements. So I mostly use it for text, so it'll it'll split up words or characters. Um, but you can also use it for, for other things. Um, and it's quite um, small and the API is really easy to use. Um, I use it a lot for demos that I do like device orientation with or um, like volume and stuff like that so that I can affect each letter individually okay. without having to, in my code, write, wrap it in a, a bunch of spans. So what I will do is put in the splitting JS library into my code pen. Um, so if, if I click on the JavaScript toggle uh, cog thing next, yeah, there, yeah. Um, I can paste in the splitting JS library, which I just copied from my Fira code pen. Okay. Um, and then that'll give me access to it. And then in the HTML, I can go... So this is actually going to break everything, just so you know. But um, I'm ready. I think I think it's data. Is it data splitting? I think. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. I'm pretty sure it's data splitting. Um, we'll leave. We'll get. Oh no, wait. We'll leave that for now. I'll come and remove that later. So we've got data splitting. I can't remember if I need the JavaScript bit in, but I'll just add it just in case the little splitting function. I don't think I need it if I've got the data attribute, but it's been a while. So what is gonna happen now is that it's not gonna work um, because I'm currently applying the animation to the H1. And what I wanna do is apply it to um, the individual characters. So if you were to inspect this code um, in the code pen, Mm -hmm. Actually, this is a really good moment for me to mention. I often open up the debug mode of CodePen. Um, in uh, change view, there's, um, I don't know if it's just for pro accounts or not. Uh, uh, it must be. Do you have a pro account? I don't. Oh, a... okay. Well, let me tell you about an awesome feature of the pro account. You get lots more options and one of them is debug mode and it's really, really handy. Um, highly recommend. I, I've been, I love CodePen. Um, I think it's great. And the private pens are really awesome. And the debug mode is really awesome. Um, is this it's going to show, it's going to show the card. Isn't it? I was just going to upgrade on stream. Maybe, um, yeah. it's, it's not important. Um, we can do it in here, but it's really handy because it, it'll, it makes it easier to debug. And when I'm doing things like, uh, device orientation, um, sometimes they don't work inside CodePen because of all of the frames. Okay. Um, so it, it's just, um, yeah, I just think it's awesome. Anyway, not important. If you inspect this code, uh, if you go back to our pen, 
wherever it went. It's coming. Okay. <laughs> I'm a pro cool. now. Okay. You're a um, pro now. So let's go back to this pen here. And now I can do. Oh, we lost debug mode. We lost collab mode. We lost oh, yeah, collab perfect. mode. Oh, no, it's there. No, it's there. There. I see it. Hello. Yeah. So Sorry. here we are. Yeah. If you inspect, so right click on the text and inspect it inspect um and then uh there's a div just uh, yeah so if you expand for h1 there's a span inside that now and if you expand that there's now a bunch of spans wrapped around each letter um so okay. splitting js basically splits them all up into individual letters that you can can target um, okay. And that's how you can then, uh, so it's got a class of char. That's how you can then um, animate them individually. Got so it. in in my CSS, uh, I've changed the um, animation class to now not be animation H1, but be animation splitting char. Actually, you could probably just do dot char um, would, would also work. But now it doesn't work. And the reason that it doesn't work uh, is because I have to target the pseudo elements. Um, so if I go uh, before and I'll just copy that and go after, this is probably going to break. Okay. All right. Um, then what I need to do um, and this is kind of a little bit frustrating because all of this stuff is applied to um, the H1, but now we've got all of these spans and, and stuff in there. Okay. So what I need to do is um, go uh, dot char for the class, move all my pseudo elements into there. And then we're going to go um, position. Uh, relative and display inline block to make the text nice. Oh, it's all gone now. What have I done? Hang on. I need to inspect and see where I'm at. Let me just comment out the animation so I can see what I've broken. Oh, this is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I know, wait, where was I? I've lost my um I've lost my code. Here we go. There's my div. All right, what have we got? I've got all my styles. This always happens. I'm like, what was I doing again? <laughs> Class char. Uh, okay. So they're all sitting currently over there. All right, what have I missed here? I've got my... They're all over. I've got, there, I've got this, I've got that position. Do I have that? Huh, where is it going amiss? The, the, the um, pseudo oh, elements are all zero, zero. Do they need to be... Yeah, what have, what have I forgotten to add in? Do we need to make them um, like width? No, we shouldn't need to add a width. Position, what have I got? I've got content, position, I got position relative on char. Do I have any JavaScript errors? Did I do something wrong and it's not working? No, the JavaScript's okay. JavaScript's okay. We shouldn't need to add a width because it's, um, so I've got, oh, 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 this, uh, every time the content attribute needs to change to data char, not data heading, because data oh, heading was my one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Every no, time. No, no. Um, I do this every time. Okay, cool. So I'm just going to go in my HTML and delete my one because I okay. don't need that. And then so do you need to move this at all? Um, this, uh, no. This path? Uh, no, we'll, we'll leave that. What we're going to do now um, is, so you can see now that the gradient's all kind of messed up because it was across the whole text effect, but now it's it's across like one. Mm -hmm. um, so in order to fix this, uh, what we'll do 
is we're going to make the, I might just uh, get rid of this so we can see it better. Yep. So this is what it kind of looks like now. Um, what I think we need to do is change this, um, maybe like the size, uh, the, pos the position, I think, of the, the background gradient. So if we go like maybe we'll add the background size in as well and we'll say like 100 people width. Okay. Cool. And then we'll shift the position. We'll go background position. Um, and we'll use the uh, index of each, um, what's it called? Character. Let character. Thank you. Each character <laughs> to. Um, I'm helping. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. We'll, we'll move the, the position of each. So we'll use the index from each character to offset the position so that Got they it. kind of line up a bit. So I think the way we'll do that um, is like, I think it's like um, calc bar char index, I think is the thing. And then. I think, yeah, I think we, that was it. Wait, do I need that bracket? I think we'll just go times 5%. I don't think I need that additional bracket there. Okay. All right. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to use this in our animation. Oh, I should have put the animation back on. This will be fun. Watch this. Now they're going to bounce on their own. Um, oh, cool. Right. Okay. L let's clip the text again so we can see it. Oh, amazing. Um, this is so fun. Okay. So we'll whack that original background position at the start and the end so it loops back around. That'll be, that'll be fun. And then in the middle, uh, maybe at like 50%, we'll offset it. So we'll animate the gradient like along the text. Um, I think like 20%, maybe 25%, no, 20%. Um, yeah, that's oh, cool. Oh, cool. I kind of like that each letter is individually clipped off. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it across the whole thing and get the pink. Let's see what happens if we move the clip path. I don't think it's going to look as good. Um, we'd have to move it onto, yeah, I think because we've split the characters, now we have to have it across the, across each individual letter. Oh, do you see that? That was cool. Yeah, that was kind of wild. It was like, where did I put that? On the, each character, it's like cuts it off. <laughs> This is how I make the folded text actually by slicing parts of it and then putting new layers on and only revealing different parts and then it right. like folds up because you've you've hidden hidden part of the text. I'm gonna leave it on um, on the after and we'll have it on each individual one. I think that's fine. Um, okay, so at this point, we're we're nearly finished, I think. But you know what? I think we're missing the background needs some love. Okay. I am going to give you something amazing. Um, one second. So when I make code pens, I think it's really important that you, um, you know, the background is important just like um, just like everything in it, right? Sure, it's a text effect, but everything around it is kind of part of that process. Right. So when I make them, I try and like tie the whole whole thing in together. So with that in mind, let's add a background image and we'll go background size. Um, wait, what do I want my back? 100%? What do I want to do? Yeah, 100%. Probably do, should we do like 100%. cover? Yeah, we'll do 100% and cover for the image and then we'll add like a blend mode in. So we'll go like okay. background blend mode. And that'll blend the um, gradient into the image. Maybe we'll go like difference because that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head right now. Whoa. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> what, 
what I normally do, space talk. Oh, hang on, wait. We can't have Jello there because that's not Jello. Um, we'll go Corgo instead. That's funny. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, what I normally do, because I don't fully understand how all of the blend modes work, is I open up the inspector and go to the body. And then I just click through um, the options until I find one that I like, which I'm sure is what a lot of people do who don't understand. Um, Hold, please. How did you do that? Like, I'm, I'm going Okay, in. so if you go to body, click on body. Body. Yeah, and then go down to background blend mode. Yeah. And then you click on the value, and then it'll give you a list. And then you just uh, click, use the down arrow and it'll show you what it looks like. And then you can just pick wow, one that I've you like. Wow, i never, this is so obvious in retrospect. Yeah. I am so, so upset just, with myself for never having tried this. Yeah, and then you just pick one that that you think is Wait, nice. Where'd you go? I like, I think I'm I back. like over, overlay, I think is my favorite. Okay. In this instance i quite like difference because it's you know so absurd um which i think it is, is fun. that <laughs> it's really absurd right uh but i think i think my preference in this case is overlay i was just having a look um i think that that is perfect it looks yeah um, that's that's pretty intense yeah so uh, what I really like about background blend mode is that um, obviously you can combine the different gradients and um, images together and like mush them together, much like Photoshop. Um, sometimes I'll use mix blend mode on text effects as well to like um, overlay the text on different backgrounds and stuff as well. But I don't think we need it in this case. Okay. Um, I, I could think, could um, you maybe show us what that looks like just so we can see? Yeah, uh, where do I want to put it? I think it has to go on this one. No, we might need to put it on the whole H1. Let's see what happens. Blend mode. I don't know if it'll work. The blend modes need like, um, you need to get them in this specific ordering and sometimes I forget what order it's supposed to be in. Oh, yeah, and, and if it's, like, if we have to go and, and change, like, everything in here to make that work, that's not a big deal. Yeah, um, maybe if we put it on, because, like, all of the colors and stuff are on the um, pseudo elements, um, we might have to put it on, sorry, I'm just, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I was just looking in the browser to see how it worked. We need to put it on the after. Um Sometimes when I'm trying to figure out where something goes, it's just way easier to put it, to open up um, the tools and just like click around until you get it to where you want it to be. So it's pretty much the same as, um, as <laughs> background blend mode, but you, you can, you know, blend the text with the background. So you can do exclusion, um, uh oh, that one's boring um what's <laughs> hugh hugh do uh oh, what's this one do oh that's boring too let me let me click through i forget what they all are i think soften is one of them yeah soften or soft light soft light hang on let me see i'm just like quickly I think the first one I went with is the best one, Difference. Yeah, Difference gets pretty wild. I, I uh, Difference is definitely the best one. The thing that the thing yeah. that blows me away about these, um, and it, and I'm going to get the the explanation mostly right. And if anybody actually knows the spec, they're going to be just horrified at the way I'm about to explain <laughs> this. But like, what what I love about these blend modes is that it's it's like just color math. So it's yeah. you're like, oh, if I have the the color values and I get like the difference of like subtracting one from the other then you just replace it with that new value and you get something weird and yeah. it's I love that stuff it's so cool yeah me too because it gives you the opportunity to like do something creative and different and interesting and like I don't fully understand how all of them work um 
I, I have a loose understanding of a couple that I, I use pretty frequently, but mm. um, yeah, I, I just think that I'm going to put it back to difference. Difference, <laughs> is my, difference is my favorite. It works really good on um, like, you know, when you have those split vertical layouts where it's like white text on one side and black text on the other and the backgrounds are reversed. Mm -hmm. Difference is really good for that. Um, that's that's how you can just get it to work with um, a background gradient, black text, and a blend mode. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you know what I think we should do now? Because we've used a variable font, let's animate the, maybe to finish off, let's animate the variable font a bit yep. um, so we can see it. So I'll just copy the font variation settings. And I'll put the base uh, in at 0% and, again, at 100. And then, again, we'll just do 50% because that seems easy. We'll change these values a little bit. So I think maybe we'll leave mono as is, but we'll change that um, casual mm -hmm. uh, one to maybe, like, 0.4, I think. What's that do? Oh, Yeah. You can kind of see it. Oh, maybe yeah, you we'll can just, see it moving around. Maybe we'll just do zero. Oh, yeah. So then it sort of goes, um, as it bounces, it goes like square. Yeah. And then maybe we'll do, we'll make the slant as well. We'll change that to minus seven. Was it minus? I'm just. Yeah, it's checking. negative. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah, cool. Um, and and we'll change the weight. So if we go 300, so we can make it go like skinny as it bounces. Uh, oh, whoops, I did the wrong one. That's not right. We want to go there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, let's, because this is, now we have a space corgi, it's absurd. We can make weight like really, really heavy and it'll be like crazy. <laughs> Much like a corgi butt. That's what that looks like. You know how they're like all fluffy and bunchy? <laughs> so I heard a piece of a piece of trivia that may or may not be true. So this this may be apocryphal oh. apocryphal evidence, but um I I was told that Corgis in uh, in Japan they refer to corgi butts as momos because that's the the Japanese word for peach. <laughs> well, it does kind of look like a peach. I I mean I it's a yeah it's a it's a you know a, it's a fuzzy corgi butt like it yeah it fuzzy looks fuzzy corgi butt yeah I love it <laughs> I I think I told you this I had a corgi when I was when I was growing up and he was the absolute best such a sweet little fluffy boy. Oh, um, I think I think I still have this photo. Do you mind if I show it? Oh, you it? still have the picture. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Um, right. His name was Toby, and I loved him so much. Yeah, <laughs> that's my that's my dog. He that was so good. Is an adorable dog. He was such a sweetie. He um, it was really funny. People would come to the front door, and he would bark, and he had like a big dog bark. But then they <laughs> you'd open the door, and they'd be like looking for this big dog, and then they'd look down and see this little corgi, <laughs> and be like, "What is this?" <laughs> It was very, very sweet. But he was a, he was a good boy. He he never he used to like roll crawl on his stomach across the carpet to get to sneak pats from us. Oh, <laughs> dogs are the best. I I love dogs. <laughs> well, I don't really know what else to add to this. Um, I don't, I don't right know now that we need I, to add anything else to this. I, I, this feels I feel like, like art this to is me. Perfect. Yeah, I think this is this is the perfect text effect um, for. For corgis and corgi butts, <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying we've, now. We've added, yeah, we've we've. I think this is an adequate ode to corgi butts. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think, Chat? I, I, any any questions? Um, anything that you want Mandy to talk about before we wrap up? Uh, otherwise, while we're waiting for the chat to decide if they have questions, where should people go to find you online? So we we know uh, we've got your your code pen. Um, oh yeah which is this is just a, a treasure chest like go and go and look at it it's super fun lots of good ideas to to riff on and remix um where else 
Uh, I am pretty much only on Copen and Twitter. Okay. If you want to talk to me, Twitter is the best way to do it. It's Mandy underscore Kerr, yeah, um, which I'm sad I can't have Mandy Michael, which is such a cooler name than Mandy Kerr. Um, <laughs> so I'm on Twitter all the time. Um, I usually tweet about front end, my dog, uh, or anime, um, or recently the time and date when it's a cool number. Um, like <laughs> yesterday, was it yesterday, day before? It was like 2020, 02, 2020, 20, um, which I thought was the coolest thing. Um, so I was like tweeting all day when it hit different 20 variations. Or like two, two minutes past eight was like 20, 02. 20 02 2020 which is so cool um but i try to not tweet dumb stuff too often because people people don't people don't appreciate my um my not front end tweets although at christmas time i do do a a fun desk dance where i dress up in different christmas costumes but that's a whole year away so you I have, have to suffer through that i have seen the desk dance and it is absolutely charming um yeah. oh thank you. Yeah. Next year I've got it. I don't know what I'm going to do next year to, to step up my game. Maybe like build a staged costume where stuff comes out. That might be fun. <laughs> um, just keep up in the ante. That's, uh, yeah, I yeah. feel like th this is one of those problems where it's like, okay, I'm going to go bigger. And then it's like, well, how do I go bigger than bigger? And <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just going to get worse. But Twitter is pretty much, um, my DMs are open. So if people have questions, they can ask me there. Um, I, Pretty much, if you find my email address, which I think is somewhere on the internet, I pretty much never respond to emails. Um, nothing, nothing I get emailed is is really responded to. But if you want to talk to me, Twitter DMs, that's the way. Or I'm on various Slack groups. Um, uh, there's one that my local community runs called Fenders Perth, which is like front enders, front enders. Um, which, yeah, that's it. Um, we have a Slack group, so uh, I'm always on there. But time zones for a lot of people. If you're in Australia, that's a good place to hit me up because I'm in there all the time because I'm the moderator. So um, we have a website called uh, fenders.co. Uh, yeah, oh, no, don't quote me. <laughs> don't tell my boss. Because I'm supposed to read my work emails. Um, I do read my I do read my work emails. Just yeah. So if you find my work email address, I'll probably respond to you there. Um, but yeah, Twitter, Slack, Copen, excellent. They're the, the main places for me. Or uh, my dog's Instagram, which is a dog named Jello, and I highly recommend you visit it because it's better than my Instagram. Oh geez. <laughs> Oh, this is good. Yeah. Well, that's that's going to be a new... I don't use Instagram, but sometimes I go to the, the web version of Instagram to look at people's Instagrams. Yeah, I just <laughs> I just um, like to have a place to post pictures of my dog um, mm -hmm. because I think he's cute. So, yeah, uh, yeah that's I where you can find me. Chat agrees. Um, okay, so... <laughs> I think this, I mean, this was super fun. I am, uh, I am extremely happy with how, how much fun we were able to have in such a short period of time. Um, yeah. so yeah, Mandy, thank you so much, uh, especially for coming in on your weekend. I really appreciate you coming on, uh, waking up yeah. early on a Saturday is not something that anybody wants to do. So you're, uh, you're, you really are a superhero for that. Um, Thanks so much. Chat. It's been fun. I really enjoyed it. And now I have a great new pen to add to my text effects collection. Yes. Um, yeah. So chat. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I especially it's a Friday night in most of the US if you're if you're watching oh. from the US. Um, so with that, I think we will let everyone go enjoy your weekend. We're going to raid yeah. if you're into that sort of thing. Otherwise, <laughs> um, Mandy, thank you again so, so much. Thanks so much. Thanks, it was chat. great. I had fun. Yeah, enjoy the evening and the weekend for you. Let's see what's coming up next. I think I think we might have a little bit of a break, which means, yeah. So uh, we don't have anything scheduled, which means I'm going to be doing solo streams. So uh, come in next week. I'll put some some details up, but we will be building the Netlify swag store. So oh, until then, oh cool. 
Yeah. Oh no, nobody's live. I love Netlify. Netlify is awesome. I I enjoy it, uh, you know, and not just because they pay my bills. <laughs> Does that mean you're going to um, have the little cat stickers? The cat stick. Yeah, I well, I don't have any on me now, but we do have them, and they will be available in on the, the store. In the store. Yeah. Ah, oh, they're the Along best. Along with some new ones, which I oh, some new ones. They're my favorite stickers. I've got the cat on my my personal laptop, and it is with the the dancing the party corgi and the cat one is probably one of the best uh my favorites on my laptop it's really good awesome. not important <laughs> very very cool okay so we okay. have uh someone learning to code with code academy we're gonna go raid that channel um enjoy all right enjoy your weekend thanks y'all Thank we'll you. see you next time see ya. bye